Hello and welcome to Sport Quest Holidays YouTube channel. My name is Matt Crow. I am a sea and game fish and travel consultant for Sport Quest Holidays, and today I'm going to talk to you about scray cod fishing in northern Norway. Um, we do two types of holiday out to northern Norway. We do hosted and we also do unhosted. Unhosted is a self-drive holiday on the boats. You go out as a group, you will then be on the boats, you will drive it yourself, you'll find the fish, you'll find the marks, you will have some help from the guides out there, but you are looking after yourself while you're out there, whereas hosted, you have a host looking after you the whole time you're out there, um, helping you find the fish, etc. So, right, scray cod. What is a scray cod? A uh, scray cod is born as a scray. It's a subspecies to your normal cod you will find in the ocean. It uh, lives in the deep water of the Bering Sea, and when it comes to spawn, it migrates from the deep water, and it travels round down to the Norwegian coastline to spawn in the shallower water. Now, a scray, you look at it, you'll see, if you better tell it's a scray, it has a much whiter belly, uh, they're beautiful looking fish. The meat on them is a lot tougher, and that's because they've traveled all their miles, and they've toughened up on the journey, you know, they've become really muscular. And you can tell this is a scray as well when you're fishing, because when you hook them, they are a lot harder fighting than a normal cod. You know when you hook a normal cod, just plods, you feel the head shakes, whereas if a scray that actually hits that shad and that goes, you know, that, that you can have lines stripping off your reel, it's good fun. It really, really is. Um, they reach sizes in excess of 100 pounds. The record is around that sort of marker, but the commercial anglers off northern Norway have caught much bigger fish. They have caught fish. You know, they are dream fish, they are dream cod. The British angler are going out there to fish for these fish. Just absolutely, you've got to do it. You really have. Um, Norway, Sport Quest, we offer lots of places to go out there after the scrays. Um, we offer a place called Mefjord, which is a bit further down from the other place we offer, which is Haverson. And there's also another place up there called Lofoten. These are all very good places to go fishing. You'll find them out there, um, but the thing is, the season for scray runs from January to April. Now, as you can imagine, January to April, out of Norway, it is cold. So if you do go on one of these scray fishing holidays, you have to ensure you are wrapped up warm, because uh, I've seen pictures of people out there fishing and they're covered in snow and the reels are iced up. And yeah, that's, uh, it is pretty extreme, but it is also very, very good. Um, like I say, right, you go out to Norway, you want to catch these scray, you're on the boat, next thing we need to speak about is tackle. Now, a perfect rod for scray fishing is 20 pound class to 30 pound class boat rod. Something like this, we have the, uh, this is a six foot six travel rod, 300 to 400 grams. That is absolutely perfect for what you're going to be doing because whilst you're fishing for these scray, you are going to be using some pretty heavy gear. Uh, this is no dangling around the UK coastline. This is hardcore cod fishing. Um, obviously, with braid, you'll be using, a, I'd recommend 60 to 80 pound braid. I mean, this is just your normal braid, but for scray cod fishing, we recommend depth marker braid. Now, the depth marker braid, it has colors that change every 10 meters. So when you're lowering the shad down, you know exactly how deep you're going by counting the colours. This is because scray fishing is very, very dependent on the depth you fish at because the big female fish sit right at the top of the shoals. Now, the host on the boat will be looking constantly at the depth finder. And what he's looking for is the top of the shoal because you will see rises and peaks in the shoal. The fish will come up, and where they're coming up to, that is the males rising to meet a female cod. And you want to be fishing right at the top of them because the females are the ones you're after. The males, lovely fish, very hard fighting. But if you want a big scray, it is the females that you have to go for. Um, like I say, 60 to 80 pound rope. And that will be attached to a very strong leader. Now, we use a leader because it will get rubbed up and you can change it as and when you see nicks and marks start to appear. 
And it is always a good idea every time you catch a fish to check your leader because if there is a crack or a fray, you do not want to lose that fish of a lifetime. You know, you don't want to be hooking into that fish, have that rod doubled over, have that reel screaming, and then it all goes slack because you haven't checked your leader. Uh, this is one that we do use, uh, 150 pounds, and this is attached to, first of all, a swivel at the top, and then from that swivel, come down to another swivel, which is then attached to a split ring. Now these swivels are split rings, I normally go for around 500 pound break and strain because it is constant action. You are going to be putting a lot of stress on your tackle. That is no exaggeration. I've been out there fishing and it's been continuous fish and you're shaking 30s and 40s off at the side of the boat and they're one after the other. And you want to have the tackle that is going to be looking, um, catching them. And also, shads. Now that is one of the shads that we would recommend for going scrape cod fishing. Now you look at the size of that and you think, why would I use something like that? You need something this size because it picks out the bigger fish. This shad is lowered down. And as you can see, what we have is, you have two cable ties at the front of the big bob. That is to stop the body being pulled off because you will have so many fish hitting your shad that it will become a little bit battered over time and that just ensures it doesn't come away. And instead of attaching the hook by mono, we use split rings and swivels. Now that is because yet again, these scrape cod are very tough biting fish and they have extremely sharp teeth. Um, as they obviously come in a breeding season, the teeth do enlarge and the teeth do become very sharp and this just ensures that, because you are going to be catching so many fish, that your snood, if it was monofilament, would be absolutely battered. Whereas using it like this, you can guarantee it's not going to snap. And what we do with this is, we attach it into the back end of the fish of the shad and obviously the cod come up, they hit this shad, they take that treble in their mouth and then that comes off and the fish is on and the shad is kept loose from the fish and not in its mouth. Another thing I'd recommend is obviously these will get battered over time out there so take out some super glue and at the end of every day rather than changing your shad body all the time, super glue your shad body together. That will ensure that you can keep using the same one for a lot longer time. Now, when we were out there this year, obviously, these big shads drop down. You don't have to give them lots of movement. You're not bringing it up and down. You are literally moving it very, very slightly. Now, you're moving it slightly because those big female cod, they don't want to be chasing fish. They're big, fat things. They just want to sit there and they want to eat something in front of them that is easy to eat. And these big, big bobs being, you know, up and down, tiny little movements, maybe a little bit of side to side, that is the perfect meal for them. And it does work. There are some lovely fish I've seen caught using that method. But also, the cod, when you're, when you're fishing for them, you're looking for them coming up in the water. That signifies they are feeding. Obviously, right up is where you want to be fishing for them. But if you see them off the bottom, broken up in the shoals, that means they're feeding. That is when we would use one of these big bobs, get it down in amongst them, because it is a lovely sized prey item for them. But if you see the shoal down near the bottom, rather than using one of these, what we found this year is that switch to a smaller shad, a cut bait or something along them lines. Uh, you drop it down. When they're not on the feed, a smaller shad will entice those fish two bites. Um, the big bobs weren't being touched and we saw people putting the shads on the smaller ones and as soon as they dropped them down in front of the fish, bang, every single time. Right, now obviously the next thing you need to do is you need to think about hooking these scrape cod. Now, when you're down, you're moving your shad around, you might feel it go light, which is where the fish has come up in the water. Now, if you suddenly see your line go slack and it's coming up, wind down, wind into the fish 
and left end to it. Uh, you may also have, have it where the rod just doubles over and keeps going. Now, look at the fish, you're gonna be fishing at a depth, could be any depth, it should be fishing, you know, maybe 40 meters, maybe over 40 meters. We found when we were out in Norway, 40 meters for some reason seemed to be the magical mark. Um, but you hook the fish, you obviously play it, you bring it up in the water. Now, we'll be looking over the side, as you see colour come up in the water, do not wind anymore. Hold that fish and let it stay where it is. Now the fish will expel air from its bladder. You will see the bubbles come up, and once that fish stops expelling air, that will suddenly start fighting again. It happens every time. You will know when it's ready to come up because the rod will go over again and that will start plodding around. Now as soon as the air has gone, wind it up, get it up to the side of the boat, carefully lift it out to the water, because obviously they are big fish, there is a lot of weight to them. If you want to return them, I would always suggest returning the big females. If you want to take a scray home to eat, the smaller fish are much better eating. Um, take them out to the water, get your photographs done quickly, and then place them back in and let them go. And as long as you've let that fish expel all the air, that fish will return to the bottom without a care in the world, ready to lay thousands more eggs and produce a lot more scrape. Right, now after you've released that monster cod of your dreams, the 80, 90 pounder that you're gonna catch on this scrape trip when you go out there, you're gonna get, get your shad back down there, you're gonna be catching more and more and more fish. You're gonna, you're gonna catch so many, like I say, we were out there before, and the fishing at that time of year for the cod is phenomenal. It really is. Now, as I've touched on previously, hosted and non-hosted trips, if you're listening to this and you're thinking you'd like to do a scray cod trip, but you're not confident enough to go out there by yourself or with a group and drive your own boats, then come out with us on one of our hosted trips and we will put you on the fish and we will take you through scray cod fishing and we will help you catch the fish of your dreams. Now, if these holidays sound like what you want to do, then uh, contact me in the office or Paul Stevens, and we will guide you through the trip, take you through your booking, and we will get you out to your way catching that monster cod. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Like I say, I've been Matt Crow. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and check out the YouTube channel for more videos coming soon. Thank you.